The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. Brought to you by Nadex. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Today, extending that July 4th. I hope everyone had a great July 4th holiday. Back to a little bit of market action. And we have some volatility. We have Dow down 60, S&P down 5, NASDAQ down 5. You get the VIX at 1160. Uh, we just had some factory numbers, factory orders for the month of May fell 8.8% versus down 0.4%. So you have the market pull back slightly. S&P going down about four points, trading at 24.20 right now. You had oil overnight with some action. Oil, taking a quick peek on the Nadex platform, all the way up to, we were above $47 in the price of oil trading right now. Let's see where we're at. Commodities, binaries, crude oil, daily, and we are at 45.61 currently looking at the August contract. So today, I'm fortunate enough, I hope everyone just checked out that great 10 a.m. update with our man Basil Chapman. Basil, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. How was your 4th of July? It was fairly quiet. Went to visit some friends and uh, just took it easy. Looked at a lot of charts. I have to tell you a something. A lot of charts. Fascinating okay. market, this. <laughs> well, we have a lot to look at, for sure. Jumping right into it, let's jump over to our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks, TD Ameritrade. Uh, the options hour, every day at noon, right here. You want to check out options, learn all about them. Kevin Hinks, Scott Connor, great program. Kevin, good morning. What are you doing? Uh, we're doing great, man. How about yourself? We're back. We are back. You know, it's, it seems like we got two back-to-back -back weekends there. And, right. um with a little bit of market action mixed in in Monday, right? It feels like a Monday, but it's really a Wednesday. It is. It, but, do, uh, it does. You know, it's still the summer. It's still uh, around the 4th of July weekend. A lot, You know, less eyes on the market. But I think today's news, you know, you're right, Tommy. The factory orders were a little disappointment just now. J just came out. But uh, I think the FOMC minutes yes. from later on today will be pretty important. 2 o'clock Eastern, yeah. yes. Because they're going to want to know what's Janet Yellen's views on interest rates and what is her um, news on shrinking the balance sheet. Definitely, right? Definitely. And, and and this is and this puts a good, you know, it gives it gives everyone some, you know, the ability to be in the room and what they discuss and seem like that. So I think I think that'll in in a quiet day, quiet market. I mean, we're a little softer, but uh, you know. Nothing that's going to scare anybody, but I think this the the Fed minutes will give somebody, you know, it give give people some trading ideas. And we'll probably see a calm down even if we get some action this morning coming off that ten o'clock factory number noon one o'clock maybe during your show, Kevin. You can absorb a little premium on those options if everything calms down until that two o'clock uh, release of those minutes. Right, right, exactly. So, so it's you know, we we, we got a couple news, Tommy. Uh, it's still, it's still, remember, it's Wednesday of 4th of July weekend, so a lot of, probably still a lot less eyes on the market than normal. I so, agree. You know, I was thinking last night, Kevin, watching the fireworks, and I think of being up in Cape Cod, Basel, yeah. beautiful Massachusetts, you know, up there. And um, what was so amusing to me is that as a child, I, of course, you know, we had the summer off. But, um, man, I never fathomed working the day after July 4th. I mean, that's a late night. Everyone's up watching their fireworks, right? Exactly. You're, you're down Cape Cod. You're, you're out in the Hamptons. You're, you're, you know, that's a vacation evening. So the next morning, um, it's, you know, and I took it easy like Basel, so it's not a big deal. But, yeah, I associate that with vacation, the day following especially, exactly. Right. So I, I wouldn't expect too much follow-through of this market. Although, that said, you had a pretty substantial move here in oil. And yeah, and yeah. how about the action we got on Monday when really you, you should have said, you know, we'll just get a few hours of, of calm market volatility, you know, market action. And we had quite a run um, on that half right. day Monday. We actually had something to talk about, Basil and I, when we were in here doing the program, for sure. Yeah, you know, th th this market is drifting without a lot of conviction right now. So, sure. but I mean, you're getting, you're still getting movement. Right, right. 
right? Right. If you're and like you said, right that, now, that, you're, that you know, move just in oil as well, you know, that's right. a big move. Gold, um, it's gold still down. I saw gold trading at 1218 this morning. I mean, that's, you know, some, some serious action. So what are we talking about on the options hour today? Today we are talking about, um, we, you know, we link a, an article to the Wednesday show. Okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll be talking about this show based on that. Today we are talking about, um, I believe it's the Analyze tab. Nice. And how we use the Analyze tab and things like that. I'm going to have to check that. I, I know you say, what do, what do you need that you could just live by? The, the Analyze tab? The stats page and the Analyze tab. That's Absolutely. right. Absolutely. That's right. So anytime I hear you're going to talk about those, I try and tune in, man. Awesome. Kevin, do you, Kevin, do you have any, do you, um, do your clients have any bias right now? Do you get a sense of a bias, or are they just kind of watching you? They well, we don't have. Still? I mean, obviously, uh, summer summertime. We compare our summer to summers in the past because summer is less eyes on the market. But TD Ameritrade will be coming out with their IMX reading, which the investor movement index that'll be probably next Monday. Okay. Next Monday. Okay, good. Yeah, I like so that we'll as well. Real clear. Do I have anything for you now? No, I don't. But next Monday, we'll have a clear picture of how TD Ameritrade investors moved around during the month of June. The power of the masses, man. That's real information, right. you know? Right. Awesome. Great. All right, Kevin. Great to talk to you, man. We look forward to the show at 12 o'clock. Basil, Tommy, always a pleasure. Have a great day, You guys. too. Thanks, have Kevin. Have a great day, Kevin. Folks, check it out. 12 o'clock every day right here. The Options Hour. Great information. I listen all the time. Always learn something good in that option market, and there's a lot to learn in that option market. Uh, come on back, folks. We're down slightly. We'll see where this market is heading. Basil Chapman, Tommy O'Brien. We'll be right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
We take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien, Basil Chapman, Dow's off 64 points. And Basil, I saw you checking out the VIX over the commercial break. I love taking a look at the VIX, and we're getting a little bit of action in the VIX today, 11.59. Um, talk to me about what you've been seeing in there. So you remember we were looking on Friday, or uh, Monday. Uh, didn't that feel I, you like You know, I Friday? did the same thing. That's I was going to say to Kevin when he said it this morning. I called Monday, Friday already to somebody myself. Um, so it is amusing how the mind, and I constantly catch myself just being like, especially because two back-to-back -back weekends it felt like with a half day mixed in. Yeah. So Monday right. morning feels like a Friday. Today feels like a Monday. I thought yesterday felt like a Sunday. I was ready to watch some good Sunday night television. I, you know, they have all I those good, all the way. good shows. Think. And I said, wait a second. It's, 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 you know, and of course I watched the fireworks. It was great. I hope everyone got a chance yeah. to see some good fireworks because that was you way better. You had some great fireworks here in Boston. Yeah. I it's, bet, you know, and I couldn't find the Boston ones. I think they were on somewhere. I probably could have found them online shame on they me they were on bloomberg they yeah, were on bloomberg, bloomberg. that's what i knew they were being yes. advertised you know and i was jumping around the main stations true true no, enough it wasn't on the main station it was in bloomberg that's and right and I that's why i knew because I, I watched enough i was looking at bloomberg updates on the overseas markets even <laughs> i was saying to myself you know shame on me as in they should be online um and in this day and age i can patch into it and i have you know a tv i can probably get my ipad to broadcast right to my television you know it's a smart tv but i watched the ones in new york and they were amazing too 30 minutes and then Absolutely. another 20 minutes i mean some great fireworks for sure so let's get to the vix then so what happened on friday is i said it was really important how the vix uh, closed and the weekly chart because there was a nine period exponential moving average now let me go back to where it was so that's friday yeah and that i i believe i said that it's somewhere around 10.83 okay uh, and at the time that we spoke i think we were slightly higher and then we went lower and i said you know, if the vix end, and then during my show the, the, the market started to pull back a little bit. It had a really big move, 160 points, I think, on the down, and started pulling back. What was really important is that the VIX on Friday, and I showed this to my subscribers to my opening call, I said that, yes, we finally closed above the nine-period moving average, and that was really important because if you look at all these weekly charts, where what I had spoken to you about was when I went to the monthly, I showed you the long-legged wick, that the, the shadow they call yes. it. So what happens is you've got the price, then there's a spike to the upside, and then there's a close towards the low, and it shows a long, just like a straight line. And that straight line, we call the wick, and that um, most of the time, the price doesn't fill up and close above, certainly the 200 period moving average. But I'd say that the monthly chart and certainly the weekly charts had great difficulty over a period of a year showing a sustained move above certain moving averages. And that, what happened is Friday, we actually closed. The VIX index closed at 11.22, well over the 10.83 level. And that helped the weekly chart, but there was still this long-legged wick. And the tradition of this long-legged wick has been to have a couple of weeks to consolidate, not to go straight back. So that makes this week really important, number one. Number two is, look at the way it's walking the nine period moving average in the daily chart, and look at the MACD still strengthening. Stochastic is okay, not great. So I'm watching this very closely. Now, this is this is gonna be, if, you, if you've got a moment, I just wanted to show, show you Let's two Let's hear it, uh, I like aspects. talking about the VIX. I'm sitting here being so skeptical though, because volatility in the market, and I agree with everything that you're saying, but man, it would be something um, that we haven't seen in a in a while yeah, for, for that type of volatility to be held to, to you know because we've gotten Correct. the one day yes. and which was even we didn't get for a while right now we've gotten the one day kind of 300 point down almost but each time right it's pulled back so we'll see if it can actually hold some volatility maybe a few down days so now, would, yeah yeah but now look at this how interesting it is the Dow made a new all-time high yes I have that was it Monday right yes that was on Monday and I have it as an alternate count 
a leg D. I'm calling it D for now. We actually, for my subscribers, we still remain short, uh, the Dow, but now mostly our focus is on the other indices like the SMH, the sem semiconductors, and the Qs. We're looking at that. But what's really important about this is that the New York Stock Exchange, you know, I, I meant to ask Larry during his show, but there was, I, I just had a, a business call because uh, I couldn't get away to, to actually ask him the question because Larry always looks at the New York Stock Exchange. Yes. Us old fogies, we go back. We, New York Stock Exchange used to be very important. Well, it made a new high. Okay. That makes today's action really important because if it's an aberration, it means that it was a, a, a kind of a residual. I like to talk about, I, I cut this out recently. There was an article on, um, on earthquakes, and there's, an, a, there's a foreshock and an aftershock. For decades, I would used the expression internal low and residual low. And all of a sudden, when I read this thing on the... On the um, on um, the earthquakes, I thought, God, that's exactly what I, it's even more articulate, a foreshock and an aftershock. So my thinking here is we will know whether this is the aftershock when the QQQ, which, is re which led the way up with the semiconductor index, made its high back on the, sixth, on the, on the 9th of June, and it's looking terrible. It's making yeah. action... Tom's A to B equals C to D, sure. so the downside, that lightning rod. The SMHs and the QQQs, look, that's very negative action. The QQQ, same thing. So this is what I'm thinking, that it was an aftershock for the Dow and the New York Stock Exchange if there is a further sell-off today and tomorrow um, from where we are right now. That's number one. And that would say that even though there's a rotation, this is what I spoke about, with, what I mentioned to my subscribers over the weekend, you saw the autos come alive uh, the last couple of days, uh, not today, but they did going into Friday. Alcoa suddenly came alive. Is there a rotation going on? And will the NASDAQ now drag the major indices down like the Dow and the S&P? Because the S&P did not even come close to making a new all-time high. Sure, on, right. On and the Friday. NASDAQ was down, I think, you know, 30 points on Monday session as compared right. to the Dow. Yeah. So I'm looking at this and I say to myself, okay, the MACD and Stochastic and the S&P are very, very weak. It's going to take something extraordinary. What, what is out there in the middle of the summer, the quietest week of, <laughs> of all? To, to really get the uh, S&P above 2453.82, the high of the 19th. I don't know what it's going to take. So as I'm putting this together, I'm saying, okay, be a little careful here. I, I do have some new buys actually on stocks this morning, but I made the entry price way lower down. Okay. I, I thought, you know what, I'm just putting it in. I don't think we'll get it. I hope we don't get it, and I hope they don't break out to the upside. I'm just putting it in to show that there's a possibility that if you get a couple rough days right and it come, pulls back to your buy point right and then if these are, are going to be the rotation as fund managers say you know what uh suddenly general motors is looking interesting i don't know what can make it go higher but it's looking interesting for let me see what the general motors is right now general motors giving back quite a bit of the gain we're actually still up we got in at 34 40 something or other okay. on Friday while we were doing the show. I didn't realize. Yeah, traded as high as almost 36, and right? It's just yeah. 36. What on earth is this? This is yeah. general voters, and you just heard a report. You gave a, the report a few moments ago that activity was speaking. So this <laughs> and you know what? I was going to bring up later in the show, and we'll talk about it. Goldman out there talking about Tesla that it should be cut in half to $180 in Tesla down really? for the day. Yes. Oh, uh, come on back, folks. We have Victor from Paramus, New Jersey. We're going to be talking about Verizon. Basil Chapman, Tommy O'Brien, we'll be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how Everbank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? Everbank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? Everbank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. 
If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Basil Chapman, Tommy O'Brien, Dow Jones off 53, S&P off 4, NASDAQ off 1, VIX trading at 11.87, I have it. Overseas, we have the DAX pretty marginally up 4 points, FTSE off 3 points, CAC barely off a 0.01%, uh, so not too much happening over there. And I saw you checking out Tesla, Basil, so yes. I'm going to jump over to this article real quick to take a look because it's intriguing. And we, you know, the speculation of the value of a company like Tesla versus, you know, I think it's valued at something like $60 billion. We just looked it up, $60 billion versus GM yeah, might I be like... Yeah, I think you said over 60 I remember Yeah, and GM, I, I think, was $54 billion when right. that was done. So Goldman lowers its six-month price target for Tesla to $180 from $190. Now the stock's trading um, at $343. <laughs> so it, it loaded from $190 to $180. It didn't feel like $190 was a, a bold I, enough six-month um, <laughs> Do you ever understand the, I mean, I don't, I don't know what figures these people are using. The stock is trading at $334 and they're lowering it to what? 180 from 190 and he says we remain sell rated on shares of tesla where we see potential oh. for downside as the model 3 launch curve undershoots the company's production targets um and margins likely disappoint this comes as demand for tesla's established products which are the more expensive model s model x appear to be plateauing slightly below a 100k annual run rate um the so analyst just a couple of things that i i thought i'd mention you know um I think that's kind of honest of them because it means that they didn't. What used to happen, and still happens a lot, is that they out of, very quietly somewhere, the analysts just said 180, 190, whatever it is, as the stock moves up, very often they, they give a report that says something to the effect that it's now neutral. And what that does is it eliminates the other one so they can come back with a, with a fresh outlook. This way they say, you know, we were wrong and it wanted 190. We know it's way higher. 
but that was 190 now we're lowering that lowering that one that was 190 to 180 if that's correct then i'm saying hey bravo to them for saying hey we were, we were really off the mark by uh, by what 120 percent but at the same time we're lowering we are lowering it we aren't going we can't change anything but we are going to do you know what i'm saying I, i'm yeah I'm just no saying no that. i hear you i mean it's you know and it's a bold move and and I, you know tesla whether it's that or it's you know a number of other factors i mean it's off of 387 so it's down 20 points today but that was trading at 353 we're already 33 points off of the high that it just made um but pulling so back the, the directional chart, call is good yeah yes. but pulling back yes. the chart you know it's been quite a run since so we, i'll just explain what we've got here because i've got what i call a chapman wave two bar reversal it hit 386.99 an all-time high i remember looking at this and saying Come on, why didn't you hit my round number? 387, for goodness sake. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> missed it by a penny. But the very, and then you see there's a little doji candle. Yes. You see the doji candle, which I thought was going to be the top. We didn't have a position, but I thought it would be the top back on the 14th. But instead, we went slightly higher, 384. Uh, 25. Now look what's really interesting. You see the move that went up to the doji candle on, is that the 9th? No, the 23rd of June. Okay. Um, what happened was the magnet was already turning down, hadn't crossed negative, but look how low the stochastic was. Look how high it is there. It was way higher back when it was at peak C in early June, and then it went lower and lower. And that to me is a very important divergence. It's what I look for. Next thing is, you see the way the nine period moving average, it walked the nine period moving average. All of a sudden that's become resistance. And that two bar reversal at a, at a potential all time high, or at least a peak E or F in, the, in my, my work, says watch out because if it starts to close under the nine period moving average with the MACD and stochastic pulling back, that could be a far more uh, it's a sharp decline, but you could get your left side, right side price time match, and that's pretty much that arch formation I'll draw it in right now. So this this is looking very much like Tesla has made in the daily a sell mode with with Fridays with Mondays. I keep calling it Friday. Monday's action, and today's a confirmation. However, as of right now, you've got a, a potential peak F in the Chapman wave. With the stochastic now at 86% pulling back, still good, but the MACD is turning down. I'm watching this real closely because we could be looking at an alternate count in the monthly as a peak E, and that's going to suggest, and this is going to be real, a lot of these stocks are doing it. It means that there's a chance that Tesla's making what I call a hat trick top, which means you've got a few months of a downside move. So this week is so important in this weekly chart because if it closes decisively below 344, it's at 337 right now. That's going to put the weekly into a sell signal and that says be careful because if it goes into a sell mode, it takes quite a while for the weekly to change position and that's going to impact the monthly. So that's why I'm saying so much is happening right now um, that we haven't seen for a long time, especially with areas and sectors and stocks that we're on a tear and led the market up. They're in a way leading some of the sectors down. And that's why I'm watching it very closely. Yeah, I mean, we had Tesla go from 178 around the end of last year all the way up to 387. So you're talking about more than doubling. Um, right. So it's not, you know, rare to and be that's expected. Probably where, that's probably where the Goldman Sachs, uh, that's probably when that announcement was made as, as to bring it, as, as to it being in, they didn't like it initially, and that's why you got that 190 level, and now they've brought it down to 170. And I wonder what the short interest is, because they're finally... It's very high. It is very high, and finally they're high. getting a little bit of a reprieve, because it's always so amazing how this has been so high, because the heat that the shorts have been taking, there's almost been Terrible. no reprieve on the way up Nothing. to Straight doubling. Up. I know. Yes. Remarkable. Now, th this is something a, a lot... <laughs> Tom has said for years, if if there's a very high uh, short uh, interest, you've got to be careful. And I've always said to myself, no, 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 no. I look at my peaks and I've got, I've got a sell signal, I've got a sell signal. Well, what's very interesting is that both, both are correct. What happens is it'll still go down, but what you've got to be very careful about if there's a high short interest is the speed with which the covering takes place. Sure. So that's not to say it can't go down, but even this move, uh, look at the way it gapped up 
from Friday to Monday. Friday closes at 361. Next thing you know, it's at 371 on Monday before it turned down. Yes. And that's the thing, the speed with which short covering takes place. So I believe, yes, you can short, but you've got to have your finger on that button because those, those retracements are very quick. That's for sure. And we'll see where, you know, a lot's going to depend on, you know, and it's estimates versus the analysts talking about that Model 3 launch and the curve undershooting the company's production targets. Have you seen the look? Have you seen the design of the Model I've 3? I've seen a few, but not recently. When they were first coming out with them, I mean, you know, they, they were, you, you could put down a deposit for $1,000, I believe. Right. Um, you know, time flies. Was that nine months ago, maybe a year ago? Oh, my, yes, yes. And, um... So, so I remember seeing them, hearing about them at that point. But, you know, Tesla stock is up 65% this year versus the S&P 500's up 8%. And the S&P is having a heck of a year to be outperforming it to that <laughs> degree. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. It is amazing. All right, folks. And oil we did not have today. That's why I meant to cover that. So Wednesday with the holiday, no oil numbers. That's why we weren't covering it. We'll have that tomorrow will be the oil numbers. We'll be right back. Three minutes. Basil Chapman, Tommy O'Brien, Bull Bear, Binary Option Hour. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Basil Chapman, Tommy O'Brien. We get the Dow off 30 points, getting a little bit of a boost. I'm on the Nadex platform over here looking at S&P 500. 
As of 920 this morning, we're up almost at 2430, all the way down to 2420, back trading at 2424, and jumping over to the oil market. So this morning, I know we had some news from Russia they were talking about. Oil tumbles. I saw a Bloomberg article maybe that Russia... Um, we'll pull this over so you guys can take a look at it as well as I jump. Oil tumbles after Russia said to oppose deeper production curbs. So they're opposing deeper production curbs. They want to stay with the curbs they have. Uh, crude oil fell and it was up for eight days in a row. I was hearing that, which is a remarkable run after, of course, it, it had fallen pretty substantially. But futures dropped 1.3% after eight days. Russia wants to continue the current deal and any further supply curbs would send the wrong message to the market. So the oil market, of course, did not like that this morning. Um, and we saw it fall from almost 46.60 down to 45.45. And let's see. Okay, we got our man Victor from Paramus. He's back. Victor, good morning. Hey, John. Doing good, man. How are you? Hi, Victor. What do you think? What do you think? Where, where are we at with BZ? We're going to go to 18 or no? And the dividend, you think they're going to cut it? I don't think so. They didn't cut it during the last recession. Verizon, Verizon. Let's take a look. Verizon having a little bit of a tough day. Down about 50 cents, 1%, yeah. trading at 4453 So what do you, are you in this or looking to get into it, Victor? I'm going to nibble at it because I figured the low on it was around 18. So maybe, you know, we're down, that thing's almost back to 2009. It's in that time frame. So where do you think it's going to go? Back. You know, they bought AOL. They got a lot of debt. Interest rates rise. But they fudged their numbers anyway. So where do you think we'll go? Victor, one of the things I'm looking at, and I'm, I'm, I haven't had time. I've started the process, but I haven't really had time to dig into it, is that the the jump up in prices in uh, Verizon, I have Com Verizon, I have also Comcast, in these companies that do the communications, um, the competition yeah. that's out there is becoming intense. And right. I'm beginning to think that perhaps the Verizons and the AT&Ts um, and even the Comcast, I think that the way that the, uh, when you get a particular sector, that comes under pressure for technical reasons. That is because there are other industry, uh, other companies within the industry that are trying different things. When there's price cutting, when they're, I think they're going to be under tremendous pressure. Because for we, we had a terrific move for my subscribers uh, some time ago in AT and T, and I haven't really been able to get back in. I don't feel comfortable looking at these number one as dividend stocks, but I think that the actual competition to the industry is. We, when um, the older crowd start to do what the younger crowd is and just drop uh, what they don't need because they can find other ways of getting it, I think it's right. going to. I think it's going to impact. So I'm just talking about it on two levels. One is technically Verizon. The chart doesn't look very good, as Tommy was saying. It's come all the way back. But at the same time, if I'm looking at it, I'm not a fundamentalist, but I do try to look at it in a layman's terms. I think. It, uh, we're looking at a, an industry that's going to come under increasing pressure. And that makes it, uh, if it's a short-term trade, I would be looking towards the short side. But on the long side, I I don't know how what they're going to do. In other words, uh, Tommy, what do you think? I mean, I, so I was looking at a real longer-term chart, pulling it back all the way to where it was down at those lower levels in 2009, 2010. I mean, there's some area, Victor, towards the end of 2015 where it was around this level, right? I mean, this would be a critical mm -hmm. level. If it gets below there, the then you kind of really have... low right now. What's that? The RSI is really low. It's like it's the lowest you can go. If you use the RSI, okay. it's low for the last six to five and one. You're at like, you know what I mean? It should... You should get a bounce, but who knows that it might go even further right. down. Right, no, but who knows? I know. No, I hear you. And I would agree. I mean, you know, it's been quite a cascade from 56 to 44. You're talking about $12. You're talking about a 20% hit on a $56 stock. Um, now, they just closed on their deal in Yahoo. Uh, you know, I heard some rumors in the last few days about them maybe buying Disney, but literally just rumors. I don't think the market would like that for Verizon if they ever took what on a... What do you think the Yahoo is going to do for them? Yeah, I, I'm not well, sure if there's, you know, I mean, what do they pay? Four billion dollars or something? It's they really a, I was just, a lot of money. I was just speaking to the fact that they're they're trying to, you know, compete in that mar market like you talk about, Basil. Um, but it's at a hefty price, and if they ever tried to decide to really go at it and maybe try and compete with, 
you know, the Time Warner, Comcast, uh, and they tried to go after Disney or something like that. Spending that kind of money for the, for the stock you could wake up and that could be a big haircut. And if they're even being talking about that, maybe, you know, I think I saw um, somebody is at Verizon with Sprint talks as well. Maybe Verizon and Charter to buy Sprint. So they but could in be a spending. Way, aren't, they going, aren't they going out of the norm? I mean, for instance, uh, if you talk about most of the other companies, they're in media, they're in all sorts of things. So for, for Verizon to take Yahoo, I, it seems to me that they've, stepped out of their comfort zone and you can see it in the pride that's really what i'm talking about i think it speaks to the fact that they know they have to do something right and so that's where you know you could face some volatility if they're out there trying to figure out how to spend money to compete with those other companies that might be more <laughs> inbred in content um then maybe that's what get rid of that as a dow component like they did at&t or no Oh, good point. I don't know. That's yeah. a very good point. I yeah. never thought about that. I mean, if we break below this level that it was trading at at the end of 2014, I mean, it was a straight shot up from $25 up to $45. Well, um, it has to hold in, in the month of July. It better hold this trend line support at 42.50 in the monthly chart because then it's 41.30 is the 200 period moving average. But once it breaks that trend line, you're looking at the 38 uh, level uh, from 2000, August 2015. It, it has to do something today when it looked like it was hitting the nine period moving average if it held there i would have said you know what victor this is a nice bounce you can get maybe one and a half to two points but then i would raise the stop or get out but it gave it all back and i don't like that that's not a good chart formation there. all right so i'll hold off on it then yeah keep your eye on it victor you know we'll see i think as long as, you know, if you were going to trade this, you could keep your stops tight. But the problem is that if you ever had news that Verizon came out and bought Disney for, you know, I think Disney's, you know, they'd have to do it with some serious debt. Disney's a $150 billion company or something. Verizon's like a $180 billion company. And that would send Verizon stock dramatically lower, I think, if they ever decided to take on that type of a debt load and spend that kind of money. And you just might be prone to that type of action. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Thanks for calling, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, Victor. So, yeah. if you were, if so, if there's no oil report, Wednesday's usually when you're doing something with the oil, right? It is, yeah. So Wednesday's usually the EIA inventory, and because of the holiday on Tuesday, I believe that gets pushed back usually till Thursday at 11 a.m. And natural gas remains Thursday at 10:30 a.m. So Thursday tomorrow we'll have a good show. Thursday we'll have the natural gas numbers coming up at 10:30, and then we'll have the oil numbers right after that at 11 o'clock as we come into the end of the show. Okay, and a couple of things that I just wanted to briefly mention. You had, meant, you had spoken about uh, crude oil. Look at that a break coming up. So gold is trying its best to hold this level right here. So Good. We can we'll take a look at that. that. I'm sure a lot of people yes. looking at gold. I was looking. It's interesting. The GDX is up marginally today with gold struggling. Some of those denners were talking about a few of those gold equities having a little bit of strength. Come on back, folks. Basil Chapman, Tommy O'Brien. We'll be right back. Will interest rates continue to rise? For bold trades on U.S. Treasuries, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade TMF or TMV. Directions daily, 20 plus year, bull and bear, three times ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. 
As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has put together the finest live programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast nine hours a day starting at 8 a.m. as John Logan kicks us off each trading day with the Global Market Pulse. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour. Following the Tom O'Brien Show, Mondays and Fridays, catch live trading on the Nadex platform with host Tom and Tommy O'Brien, along with Daryl Martin on the Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts and keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN, educating investors. Catch Basil Chapman as he uses his Chapman Wave methodology to call the markets. The Tiger Technician's Hour, next on TFNN. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Basil Chapman, Tommy O'Brien, Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. It is Wednesday, not Monday, right, Basil? Dow yeah. up only 22 points now. S&P marginally positive. NASDAQ up 25. Um, so let's take a look at gold, Basil. Quite a quite an escalade that we've been getting. So you made the point that gold uh, was uh, trying to stabilize, but in fact, the GDX was uh, a little bit up. It's up 14 cents. Okay. So yeah. the way I've been looking at it is that the monthly chart is still quite weak in the GDX as the market vectors gold miners. The weekly is trying to establish, and this is going to be very important, it's trying to establish a base. I'm going to make this a little in this middle chart right here as the weekly. I'll make this a gray right there. So it's trying to establish some kind of a base. And I'm looking at the... Um, how can I put it? The world. I'm looking at the news coming out of different countries. Sure. And I'm saying to myself, you know, something's not right. Why is gold going down? I would have thought that gold. I was. I, I understood why gold was holding very well, even though the dollar uh, was suggesting that it should be rallying strongly. It gold didn't break down. Now it's starting to break down. But something tells me that this is is a base that we've got to respect. That if the GDX holds above 20.89, the low of the fifth of May, the week of the 5th of May, and in fact has a bit of a rally in the next two days without coming to a lower low than it did today. In fact, it goes to the 22 area. It's going to tell me that don't put gold out of your sight because this is the, there are a lot of things going on now. And if you think of the president at this particular point, one of the areas that he's going to have to demonstrate some kind of forcefulness could be internationally. I mean, he needs to establish something. He's losing it here at home. And this is kind of what presidents do. They quickly step out outside. So I'm watching this very closely because I think that gold is going to tell us, not necessarily if there's a conflagration around the world, but it's going to say the world, world financial markets are becoming a little nervous. Therefore, they're going back to gold as a factor, as a, what I call the fear factor. Yeah. So um, this Quite is going to be a very important. month in yeah. June when you look at the context of things and where it could have been, right? It's not like a 100-point right. move would make sense in the context of everything else that happened in terms of either, you know, dollar, bond, so forth. Yeah. Right. So it's just something to keep your eye on. And I would just put it in this category that if you are holding some gold stocks that are actually finding support or even moving up keep an eye on them because anytime gold starts to move those are the ones that should move even quicker to the upside definitely definitely yeah okay well i appreciate you filling in for me basil and uh 
I look it's always to, my pleasure. I look, I, I, tomorrow I'm going to be away. I'm going to be with my daughter. She's coming to Western Mass. And it's got perfect. Some it's to July do. 4th week. Week. We'll call it July 4th week. We'll stay in the spirit all week. Um, and I know I'll be guest hosting with the, I'll be hosting with another guest host in this afternoon. We have a bunch. Great. Stay tuned. 11, 11 o'clock Basil, 12 o'clock options. We have Dave Whiteback, Steve Rhodes. Uh, and of course, we have another guest host this afternoon, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave everybody waiting to, to see Ooh. who shows up there. But we'll have <laughs> good. a good guest host, of course, of course. You're nice, definitely. And your father certainly deserves a break. I've never known anyone to yeah, so Yeah, you know, much true. I, you know, in. we always talk about the technical and the markets, but you know, we also talk about that life manifests itself like very close by, right? Whereas he's on vacation, Dave White was just away as well, and uh, you're you're gonna be tomorrow with your family, right. right? Well, guess what? The market is slow. Um, that's it's that's true life. Period, it's, right. it's it's slow here and it's slow. Take in, what you in, can when you can. Yeah, we hope our listeners. You know, what's nice is sometimes when they have time off, though, they get to watch us and we'll see what the market's doing. And thankfully, we've been getting some market activity in this slow week. That's for yeah. sure. Yes, for definitely. sure. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Basil. Have a great afternoon. Have a great show. Coming up next. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you. Okay, folks, thanks so much. Have a great day. Stay tuned. We'll see what happens in this market. And remember, 2 o'clock today, those Fed minutes come out. Look for that as well to see what happens in this market. Thanks so much, folks. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.